Hello there, welcome to episode 58 of Shitty Idea Time. I am your host, Tess Ball, and today I get to talk with none other than Tracy Warren. In this episode, she is super generous, super fabulous. We talk all about community building and intentionally investing in your business relationships. So let's get on into it. Welcome to Shitty Idea Time, creative business experiments uncut. Learn to stop censoring your big ideas with Tess Ball. Before we get into this episode with Tracy Warren, the founder of InSpark Coworking and the backbone behind the Ignite Your Champions movement, we are we're going to talk a little bit about what is to come, what I'm excited about. Um, this podcast, I cannot believe we're over a year old. I don't even think I've properly celebrated it, but cheers to shitty idea time. cannot believe we are well more than a year in. Um, looking forward, here's what you can expect in August. We have an amazing lineup planned for you. I have an amazing lineup planned for you. Um, I get to talk with Toshi over at Wigcraft. She makes these amazing foam wigs. She's building a cool ass brand. Um, I get to bring back a little throwback episode with Nick Demas, um, a, an incredible brand storyteller, brand storytelling coach. Um, we're going to get into brand storytelling and I'll, and I'll give you a couple solo episodes as I do. So be sure to subscribe so that you get all the branding goodness in August. It is such a good lineup and I'm super fucking stoked about it. Um, and then in September, we're going to go into sales. In October, we're going to go into marketing. So you get like a little mini masterclass each month in how to grow your business. So that's what you can expect. Subscribe. Join me in the Shitty Idea Time community so you can like be in the discussion in real time with me. Um, and we have some fun challenges coming up each month. So get in on that. All the details in the show notes. Jump in on it. So now that you know what's coming, let's get into the episode today. Here's my interview with Tracy. Here today I have a fabulous guest that I'm so fucking excited to interview. <laughs> this has been a long time coming. Um, we have needed to connect this way for a while for sure. and I am just so delighted to bring you Tracy Warren. Tracy, welcome woo, to the show. Woo. Thank you. I bet you say that to all your guests. I mean, I generally am pretty stoked about the people I get well, to talk yeah, to. For sure. Like, isn't, isn't that uh, like one of the benefits of hosting a podcast is you get to invite who you want. It yeah. is. It is true. It is true. No jerks uh, allowed, man. Before we get into the details of what you do, we're going to start out with a few rapid fire questions just to get to know you a little bit. Um, and if anything jumps out at us, we'll take it back and we'll dive in deeper in a bit. So okay. our first question, in three words or less, what do you do? Create awesome community. Rad. Awesome. Um, and this does not have to be three words or less. Why do you create awesome community? You know, this is a question I've been asking myself recently, like, how, how did this happen? How did this? Um, and because I, I think I, I had a pattern of creating other people's communities. Uh, and instead of just creating my own, but it could have a lot to do with we grew up mo moving around, like we moved like 40 times before I was in high school. Um, so I'm not really, I'm not super sure what really brought that out in me. Hmm. I love that you're still exploring that. So Tracy, we know that you are an amazing community builder, but what is the most weird or unrelated job that you've ever had? Well, my first job, I was a scorer and timer of rec basketball. <laughs> yeah, I worked at a community center. Um, so I did every job related to rec sports. So I was a ball field attendant where I, I sprayed the field down in between games and raked in the holes and um, put chalk. I did the chalk lining and and then did the scoring and timing. Like, you know, when you're watching a basketball game and you hear that, eh, yeah, I was on the button that got to do that. So you've gone from being on the ground at the rec center, doing all of the, you know, eh, 
there is to be done. And now you are <laughs> building a community. You have a co-working space. Um, you are a, a published author. What about you has contributed to your success? The older I get, the easier it is for me to be me. And not giving a fuck what anyone thinks. And it has been an age thing. I was on the phone with someone just now and she's like, oh, we have this mutual friend and she just hired me as her coach. And she says she's really intimidated by you. And I'm like, okay, you know what? That's her problem. That's not on me. Like I'm an open book. Anyone can ask me anything. And I feel bad for her. And I hope she finds a way to being herself and not caring what other people think. Mm. So mm -hmm. much of what we're going to be talking about comes back to this. And I'm so excited about it. Um, I oh, already cool. want to cut to our game, which I'm not going to do, but I'm tempted. Um, but before we get to the game, we are going to talk about community building okay. um, briefly. What does that look like in your day-to-day -day life? What does it mean to build community? I think there are a lot of like buzzwords around community. And mm -hmm. for a lot of us in the digital space, we think immediately of like tech solutions, like building an online community. Mm -hmm. What does community building as a profession actually look like? This has been a really interesting discovery because a lot of time I feel like community is just kind of magic, right? Like magical things happen in community and magic is not sellable. It's not quantifiable, quantitative, whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, it's really all about caring that I pay really close attention to a lot and I just do it naturally. So I know whose dog just died. I know who's celebrating something. I know, I know a lot and I just keep it in my brain. Like I know what so-and-so's favorite candy bar is. It's just ingrained. Um, and I also know that when you have community, it makes everything easier. Whether that's me launching a book, right? I have dozens of people I can ask for help because I've been caring for them over the years. And social media just makes that so easy. Um, so that, that was a long answer. <laughs> and if a business owner came to you and was like, I need help building community. Because I think the word choice you used that was interesting was find. Um, and I think we hear like the word that I most commonly associate with community growth is build. Um, that's the word that's used on the internet, I think. Um, what's the difference between finding community and building community, if there is one? Yeah. Difference between finding and building. Well, sometimes, sometimes you are nurturing the relationships you already have, people you know well, people you've known for a really long time. Those, that's the build. I think where we might, where some people don't think is find the, who could be a champion for me? Who could I add to my network that could be a long-term partner, could be a referral source, could be a friend. I recently had someone reach out to me. We're in a women's networking group together. And she's like, I just want to be your friend. And I was at the time struggling with, do I even know how to make a friend? And so she sent me this email and I just started crying because I, I don't know if I told you this when we chatted before, but I went to the same church for 27 years. So I had a lot of what I'm now referring to as my location friends, right? Like I saw them at church every week, every Sunday, every Wednesday, whatever. So they were my friends and I left two years ago. And so, um, but I think 
there are people in our lives, maybe they're not, you know, like, like Megan McNally as an example, like, I, like I would love for her to be a champion for me. So how do I make that happen? Well, I'm going to try to refer to her. I'm going to send her cards in the mail. Like there are just things that I want to do. So she knows I'm thinking about her with no agenda. I think that that's the key in finding is I'm making deposits in her emotional bank account or anyone's emotional bank account so that when I need help or when I need, I don't even need to need anything, but boy, help is so much easier when you have community. Mm. So for a new entrepreneur who is struggling, feeling isolated, feeling alone, feeling like they have the world on their shoulders and nobody around to even talk to about it. Mm. What are the first, what's the first thing or two you would suggest they do? Join a co-working space. <laughs> Fuck yes. Love that. Shameless plug. Um, I think the, I, the, the key is just to find some business buddies, right? Some biz besties. And, and if they're not having the conversations, then you need to find people who are, or you need to be willing to start the conversations, right? Like entrepreneurship is a lonely gig or can be a lonely gig. And like, it's so refreshing to just know that we don't have to have it all together and that not everybody, no, no one does, no one. Even the most put together, raise billions of dollars in seed cap, right? Like they don't, we're all creating something as we go. I used to think as an entrepreneur that I would arrive. Like one of these days, I'm just going to show up and I'm going to know exactly what I'm doing today. And that it's funny now because I know <laughs> like it's, there is no arrival. And that's why I'm an entrepreneur, right? Like I look at my husband works for the city of Seattle, like the ultimate in 1975 bureaucracy. Um, and just the way we think about the business world differently it blows my mind. Yeah. And one of the one of the things I said before the vaccine distribution really got going, I was like, you know, you give that problem to a bunch of entrepreneurs, the whole country would have been vaccinated in a few months. True. But instead, you have a bureaucracy that's doing it the same way they've always done it and mm. struggled, right? Like it, it was a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Entrepreneurs get stuff done. <laughs> that because is the truth because we don't know any better, right? Like it's all right. I'm no one's ever done it this way. I'm going to try it. Like what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. I try to fail fast and cheap. Like I don't want to make a $10,000 mistake, but if I throw a couple hundred bucks at a problem and it doesn't work, eh, okay. I learned a $200 lesson. Yeah. So speaking of going fast, going hard, fucking shit up, breaking stuff, making magic. Let's do it. Let's play a little game. All right. Okay. I think I'm terrified, but I'm also super competitive. So can I win? You can totally win. I'm just kidding. Um, you'll win. Huh. You are two options for our would you rather we're creating a business from scratch game are as follows. Oh, geez. We are in both cases building community. Okay. That's a given. Okay. Duh. Of course we're doing that. The first option is you are creating an online community for aspiring karaoke singers or those who want to level up their game. 
because as a yes. chicken shit karaoke, like I don't do care. I will backup dance, but like, it would be cool to have the confidence to go out there and like belt something out. Right. Um, for, so for those people like me, who are just a little intimidated by the whole karaoke deal, we're creating a community to help us all level up. Okay. Option number two is this. You are bringing a prom-like experience to networking events. So you are working with local networking groups and giving them the prom-like dream networking evening because I know you know the power of making connections at prom. I don't, did I tell you that I went to my prom with my husband? Yeah, sure did. Okay. (laughs) Okay. He wasn't my husband then. I have to, you know, that was actually, um, 34 years ago this Sunday. Yes. I'm like that 34, I'm only 51. So when I think 34 years, that just blows my mind, but I'm totally, I'm, we're doing a prom so much. So that's, that would be my choice. Okay, great. So we are bringing a prom experience to networking events, because obviously, you know, that like intense, beautiful, magical, lifelong connections can be made at these types of events. Networking prom. Sure. Networking. What is your first go-to step? Where do you even start? Oh my gosh. First, I hire an event planner. (laughs) Hire for your skills that you don't have. Yeah. Um, there just happened. There's an event planner in my co-working space and she is amazing and creative and like coming up with all the, that, I mean, I can come up with ideas, but yeah, no, I, I'd hire that out. So I, totally... I, I love about this is you already have the people in your network. You are such a connection queen that you already have an event planner that you could go to. Do you know of any other people who immediately jump out at you that you know you want to bring in on the ideation process? For sure. Let's see. Well, I need Maggie. I need Maggie. Maggie Green. She was um, on the podcast. Can't remember her episode. Check it out. Um I need, there's this gal, she used to live in Washington. Now she's in San Diego. Her name is Rachel Alexandria. She is, we did a a book launch for someone, but we did it like a baby shower. And we, the author loves Duran Duran. So we took a Duran Duran song and rewrote the lyrics to make it the name of her book. Yeah, oh, she, she absolutely has to be part of this planning process. You know what's hilarious about this? Wow. As I was doing my brainstorm, like my pre-interview brainstorm, doing proms for book launches was an option on my list. Not to get this muddled, but I, you're a natural. Was, of course you would pick this. Of course, you were just, this is. Well, and I think part of why I picked this too, it, it really has nothing to do with you know, the fact that I went to prom with my husband, but it's that I'm sick to death of networking, like want, want, oh, go in and you say hi and glad hand people and hug people. And I, I'm just, I'm, I want to innovate. Let's do something different. So in fact, before the um, pandemic, I had put a deposit down on a hotel because I was going to plan an event, a conference of sorts. I was originally calling it the game of business. So modeling it kind of like the game of life where you would go around and really find what you need. And yeah, that all blew up. And, and I don't know if I'll ever pick that back up again, but I'm like, if somebody says, oh, come to this networking, I'm like, but you invite me to a networking. Pr- I mean, if we actually did, okay, so I'm already getting excited. Cool, if let's do actually, it. If we did this event, you know, have it at the Columbia Tower Club or, oh, even better, do it at Bell Harbor in the summer on the roof, ferry boats coming and going. 
Oh yeah. So how do we encourage that meaningful connection making through something as seemingly silly as a prom? Because As an introvert, I know I love a good job. I love having a theme. I love, like, part of what appeals to me about this is like, oh, we get to bond over something. Mm -hmm. But how could we use this prom atmosphere to actually make impactful connections for our business? Hmm. You know, there used to be a networking event in this area where the first half of it, you weren't allowed to talk about your business at all. And if you did, you had to buy someone a drink. And then, you know, after an hour, you could talk about your business. So I would imagine, I mean, oh, 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 wait, I got it. We could do it like a future prom, right? So you dress as you want to be in 10 years. Oh, because that, well, first of all, it, I'm not, I don't love to dress up. Like if you invite me to a costume party, I'm probably going to be a no, but the idea of like, who do I want to be in 10 years? Like I could get all around that. And it's a conversation starter. Like, who are you meeting with? Who do you like? It, it changes the conversation. So do we show up then as the person that we are in 10 years? uh Uh-huh. Oh, that's a thing. So it's like, it's the opposite of a high school reunion. Oh God. Yes. <laughs> have you, like oh, have you been world. to a high school reunion? No, I, I have a torrid past. <laughs> my 10 year reunion. I was like, oh my gosh, has any time actually passed? Bizarre. Yeah. So when it came time for my 25, I was like, I, nope, not going. I went to my 10 and my 20. Um, yeah, but I'm, I think 2017 would have been my 30, which is crazy. I'm not that old. Entrepreneurs too. We love looking forward. Like uh, as entrepreneurs, we are the best at looking forward. We always have something in front of us always, always. And so by being able to like step into that, realize it, dress up as that person, Well, that's cool. And what it does for our brain, right? So if you say this seems impossible, your brain is going to go, okay. But if you say, how is this impossible? There's some sort of brain science around your brain will start to help you figure it out. So, you know, in 10 years, have I had Brene Brown on my podcast? Like, sure. You know, it could happen. It could happen. Yeah. Dan um, Price, Killer Mike, if you're listening, you are my top two. Oh, Dan Price. Okay. Um, cheers to episodes like 240 and like 315. Oh my and put gosh. it out there. Right. Like, I feel you're right. Like, we're very good at future casting. And while we're good at that, we don't always know how to get there. But, but right. think about this prompt that we've just made up. You start talking about that future casting and I'm going to talk to someone else who's like, oh, I, I know how to do that. Like, or that's part of my plan too. Or wait, we could collaborate on that. Like, I just, there's, you know, I see these, there are some mom prom things that they have. And I'm like, ugh, mom prom, ugh. But Like, let's talk about visions and dreams. And, you know, even if you had like dream boards where people could write their dreams and connect with each other based on their dreams, or, you know, like, hey, I'd like to co own an RV. Like, my husband wants an RV. I don't really want a full time one, but what if four of us could go together and split up the year? Like, great. Like, that sounds like a really good plan, actually. But, yeah. Absolutely. Well, and I mean, this goes to the core of shitty idea time. Sometimes you just need permission to voice it. Mm. Sometimes those crazy, wild, big, bold, shitty ideas, you just need a container that you can step into and say, all right, I'm going to do it. I know that this space is safe. So like, 
I'm going to dream big all of a sudden. So did I tell you that's how InSpark came to be? No, tell me more. Okay. In later three sentences, tell me the story. I was at an event. We had to speak aloud what we desire. I said, I desire to open a co-working space. No shit. And then went like this. Well, if you're watching, not watching the video, there are hands up. Oh, it yeah. was like my mouth dropped. I, cause I didn't, I didn't know that that was in there. I, at the time I was running a social media marketing company and 10 months later we opened and I had no, I, I ran a service-based business. Running a brick and mortar is a different beast. So anyway, so I so for those it. of you, for those of you listening, we are going to take 10 seconds and I want you to, whether it's out loud or not, say the first thing that first big ass thing that comes to your head that you want in 10 years, just do it. We're at prom now. We've created the space. What the fuck do you want in 10 years? Mm. What do you want in 10 years, Tracy? If we're at prom... Who are you? Oh, crap. Um, you know, that's a really good question. Because I just feel like I, I'm happy driving my Nissan Versa and um touching base with people. Like, I feel like if I could just touch base with people every day, that would be a happy place for me. Like my business is running. I have employees doing the day to day and I just get to connect with people and ask mm -hmm. how I can support them. And it was interesting. We had an event a few years back and we had to do that. We were supposed to, you know, what do you want to be like in five years? And I was walking around in Spark or pretending I was walking around in Spark, checking in with people. And she was like, I don't think you get the exercise. And I'm like, I exactly know the exercise, right? Like I care. And when I have business systems in place, I can care all the time. Right now, I just have other work to do. I mean, I care all the time, but that's genius. Like that is what it's about though. Sometimes it's not going big. Sometimes it's not, you know, an elaborate scheme. Sometimes it's really just knowing what the fuck you want. And it sounds like it's to care. It's to have the time that is not watered down with all the other stuff. To just oh, and the other thing I want to do in 10 years is I want to have, so when I started in Spark, two friends invested. Without those two friends, I would never have been able to open. I want to get, and I, only, I didn't need very much money. And when it comes to venture capital and getting investors, they really, they talk about big numbers and I really needed small numbers. So I want to invest 10% of my revenue every year in companies that need $25,000, $50,000. Yeah. Because sometimes a woman just needs someone to believe in her and, and money. I mean, yeah, I can say, I believe in you, but when I say it with $25,000 has a lot more value. And I, like, I am forever indebted to those two friends. Um, because yeah, I wouldn't be here otherwise. Mm. So normally I loop it back to our big idea. Um, and I would ask you what a successful future prom networking event actually looked like. Um, oh, I can give you the answer. Perfect. Do it. It's connections. It's, we have this prom and I'm friends with all these people or connected with them and I'm watching their lives and I'm seeing them like, oh, look, those two are out having dinner. 
because this happens here. I have this picture, it's on my computer of three women out to dinner. Um, they wouldn't have met without Inspark. And that that's, I live for connecting. I live for, oh my gosh, who can I introduce Tess to? Like, do I know Dan Price? Could I find a way to meet Dan Price and get introduce him to tech no seriously like it's um it is my joy I wish I could I mean I I don't really wish I could get paid for it but like if there was a way for me to get paid for it but when I see magical things happen between people who didn't know each other except for me that yeah like that would be because sure successful event everyone's amazing everyone's beautiful but then the trickle like the the ripples that the ripples that uh, who knows right like who knows what can become of something like that yeah you mentioned Megan McNally earlier founder of FBOM if you're not part of FBOM we're gonna plug FBOM right now go be Seriously. a member of FBOM um one of the most awesome networking events, but had she not created it, you and I wouldn't be building this fucking prom right now. No, no. And, and going back to that mental health discussion, that was the very first F-bomb event I went to three years ago, which was the, it's okay to not be okay. Because I'm like, that's a discussion I want in on. Yeah. And that was when, you know, someone who seemingly had it all put together, who had raised a gajillion dollars, she cried. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not alone. Like I'm getting chills all over just thinking about it because like those are the discussions I want to be a part of. The, there, there's so many super important discussions that I want to be having and those aren't going to happen on Facebook honestly because people are so sensitive um but anyway yeah I just people coming together women coming together supporting one another we can change the world we have like and I was having a discussion with someone the other day and we were talking about why, why now for like doing DEI work. And I was like, look, us 50 somethings, we are going to get run over by millennials because they believe they can change everything. And one, I want to hang out with those people because it's inspiring and like, what can I learn from them? And what can they learn from me? And just this whole, like, we keep putting people in all these boxes. And as long as we put, like, boxes or borders. Ooh. 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 Boxes. Yeah, boxes or borders. And, like, smash the box. Like, how can I learn from you? Just because, just because you're a 20 something or a 60 something doesn't mean we can't somehow come together and create something freaking unbelievable. Yes. And we've got so much power within us and, and together. Yeah. Okay. So what day is this from? <laughs> we are building it. That's um, so much. I mean, I will drive to Seattle for it, period. I, well, yeah, I mean, seriously. Um, if you're listening to the Shitty Idea Time podcast, be sure to subscribe for updates so that you can be invited to the prom. Um, you can do that at shittyideatime.com, shameless plug. Um, not every idea turns out the way we want it to. Oh, man. Sometimes... We get in a room with one of our besties and we're like, oh my God, this is perfect. It's going to blow up. And it doesn't. Not in the way that we think it will or think it could. Um, sometimes our ideas are just duds. Yeah. 
What does failure mean to you? Well, if I could answer that with like opening the co working space for the first three and a half years we were open, I felt like we were failing because it wasn't growing. And when people have invested their cash, I felt like I was letting myself down, but I was also going to lose. I was going to lose 30,000 of other people's dollars. Um, I don't feel like I'm failing. I'm going to fail anymore, which is crazy considering what COVID did to co-working in 2020. But I think for me, I mentioned earlier that I want to fail fast and cheap. Like, great. If I have a dud idea, like I want to find that out as fast as possible. Yes. And so that I can learn from it or I can share it with someone else. And I think that's that's a huge thing about the community piece too, is if I can share a failure with you that saves you time and money, great. Like, because it, the faster we all get there together, yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um, so I'm curious, where are you going next? What is your next big, shitty, bold, brave idea? Oh, um, what are you working on? So every year I choose a word of the year and, um, we didn't talk about this, but I had, I went through breast cancer treatment last year. And so when it came time for me to think of a word for 2021, my word is audacious. So I have a sign up in my, on my desk. It says, what would audacious Tracy do? <laughs> and which is really troublesome because audacious Tracy asks for what she wants. No, that's not troublesome at all. That's been amazing. But also I am finishing up my second book. And so I started thinking and thinking about doing a podcast. I mean, I know lots of people have podcasts and how can I make it different? But I'm like, what would Audacious Tracy do? Hmm. Audacious Tracy would launch a book and a podcast at the same time. So that's my plan. First step is finish the book because I know then I have to get it to the editor and the editor will have it for a month, six weeks. So in that month, six weeks, then I start building out my podcast platform. Um, my husband just happened to, he has a degree in music and video business. So hello, thank you, audio engineer. And so he can, he can do those things. We have like, we have all that set up, which is great. Cause I know that that can be an expense when you're starting a podcast, but yeah. Nice. So if people want to so, know about your book, about this new podcast, if people want to be a part of it and join your community, where can they find you? Igniteyourchampions.com. Hell yeah. And then more importantly, who do you want to get in touch with you? Who do I want to get in touch with me? You know, my favorite people are the people who say, I don't get it. I hate it. I hate Facebook. It doesn't work. Social media sucks. Because I'm like, no, 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 no. People, seriously, you got to Marie Kondo your Facebook page. Make it make it work for you. Make it a happy place. Um, and my work, one of my words in 2020 was ease. And I have just pulled that one along with me because I want to make all of this easy for people. Because if it's easy, you're more likely to do it. That right there. Yeah. That right but, there. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for listening. And before you go, it's one thing to listen to this podcast. It's another thing to actually put it into action. So here's my challenge for you. I have, I have an official shitty idea time challenge. Your shitty idea time challenge after this episode is to reach out to five people. Five relationships you intentionally want to invest in over the next week. Spend the next five days, reach out to one person a day. 
let them know you're thinking of them, you care about them, you, you noticed what they were doing, you think it's cool, but intentionally go like plant a little investment into five relationships you want to keep around. And when you do that, send me a DM on Instagram. Let me know that you completed this challenge and I will send you a snail mail gift. I will send you some little treats some little goodies in the mail um, as a as an encouragement, as my own little celebration uh, for a job well done. So your challenge is on. Go put what you've learned into action. Take the big, scary, awesome steps that you know you need to take to get momentum going in your business, to get your brand out in front of people, and to uh, remind people that you do what you do when you're awesome at it. So I'll see you next week. DM me on Instagram. Um, I'm going to send you fun stuff in the mail. Anyway, mwah, mwah.